Ricardo was part of the jury of the, uh, the, jury of the uh, ICO, and uh, we want to know, in this case, because um, Constantine is giving the prize to the number one of the ICO, so Bada, would you be so kind to announce the winner, actually, the... <laughs> there the winner is. <laughs> Taiken, can you please come to the front? Taiken. Khalid, where are you? Please come to the front. Give him the, give him Kacha. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> this is decentralized okay. choreography. Right? Yes. yes. It doesn't work. Yes, yeah, so if you can have a photograph, photo opportunity, yes. so give him a, yeah. can you Kacha? Give him a hand. Kacha. Yeah. Where's the rest of the team? Kacha. Mm. Yes. So why did, he, why did they win? Uh, can you give the jury report, uh, Bada? Yes, so basically we saw a lot of good ICOs, good products, good ideas. And um, the thing which the jury really liked about this idea is that they are not only leveraging a blockchain to make some profits, but actually um, improve the world and, 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 and make the world a better place. And it really touched our hearts, both from a uh, business perspective as well as from a uh, ethical perspective, what they are doing. So I think the win is more than deserved. And, and, the, I want jury, to and the jury and the public just agreed with that. So yes. uh, the winner is Taiken. Taiken. Give Congratulations. Can just, just, just yeah. I think, just can let this just, sink in, right? Someone who's, um, yeah. who's lost their identity in this country sticks to stay here. And then once he's, he's Establish himself again, starts helping people in, um, in St. Martin who lost their identity. Um, I'm, I'm very honored that I can give you this prize. Thank you. The honor is ours. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys. Yeah. And then uh, it's your time to pitch. So, uh, everybody yeah. else off stage, <laughs> and let's have the Tycoon pitch. Yeah. So, actually, I I did pitch when I was uh, on the on the panel, and uh, as Mark Twain, Mark Twain again, he said that the most important two days in a man's life is that the day he was born and the day he discovers why he was born. And for many long years, I never found my purpose and like why do I exist until I became a refugee. So. For many, if you talk to, to refugees, they, they always say that they miss their home country and they, they miss the river and they miss the, the, the going out on picnics. I never had that because I never lived in Syria. I regret actually not visiting Syria in all my life, not knowing how Aleppo looks and not knowing how Damascus looks. And now I have to look at in VR and, and just on pictures on Facebook. So the day that I became a refugee, I remembered how I was living before. So 2012, in the Netherlands, I'm watching TV, and there was actually no Arabic channels, there was no Arabic food, there was even no Lebanese bread or hummus sold at Albertine. So I'm watching TV, and I look on a program, Discovery Channel, they're explaining the history of money and how the future of money will change. This was 2012. And they talked about a new program called Bitcoin, a new computer program. My background is business economics, so I had nothing to do with computers. And I, at the end of the show, it was a 30 seconds show at National Geographic. And they said that you can make your own money at home. I was like, aha, uh -huh. I lived in Dubai for seven years, so making money and hustling like, is in my blood. And I wanted to make money. So it took me six months to set up a, my first miner. And it was basically the laptops that my work was giving me. So every year we changed the laptops at work in Den Haag. And I take these laptops and I made like a small farm at home. In 2014, when I gave back my driving license, I gave back everything that I had, even my Adu Dan Haag subscription card, I gave it back. The only thing I had was my smartphone and the internet connection. In the camp, they give you a specific type of food. 
three slices of bread in the morning with three slices of cheese, one egg, cup of soup for lunch and dinner, rice and vegetables. Now, for one day, it's really nice. For two days, it's nice. But for three weeks, I'm sorry, I can't eat that. I had bitcoins on my phone, and there is Thais Bazor Pintanel. So what do you think happened? <laughs> Pepperoni pizza, vegetarian pizza, delivered to Ter Apple. The security guys, they are like amazed. How is this coming here? Is someone in the, in the assets say, if, and from the COA ordering it? The COA says, no, Tay is ordering this food. Beer, cola, cigarettes. And then the refugees started asking me, how are you paying? Like, you don't, we have cash. Everybody had cash on him. But online, you cannot pay with cash because nobody will deliver a pizza in their apple to you. They think this is a child doing a scam and that no one will pick up the pizza. So you had to pay it up front. This opened our mind to the application where we can send actually money to Syria. Families, they are in the camp. They need to send money back to their brothers and sisters and mothers, but they don't have IDs. Our IDs are confiscated. So I started teaching there how you can use Bitcoin to send money back to Syria or actually back to Turkey. And in Turkey, they change the bitcoins into cash, and the reporter or a driver going into Syria, he carries, he takes like a 50 euro with him or a 100 euro with him. Suddenly, I encountered another issue that was not only with me, but with everyone in the, I moved between five asset says, five asylum camps. And the five camps I had, I, f I felt the same issue, which is we all lost our identity. I was raised in Lebanon, so I, my Arabic accent is Lebanese. Being Lebanese accent, having a Lebanese accent among 600 or 700 Syrians is a dangerous thing to do. And not only that, I speak English. Can I speak Nederlands? Yeah. <laughs> so I am not a refugee, I'm a spy. And I had to my driving license is on weekend, so I cannot prove where I was born. Not even, I, I didn't care about IND. I want to prove where I was born to the refugees so that nothing, no one can stab me at night. And it, it was difficult. So I thought, what if the Syrian government or what if the Kuwaiti government issued birth certificates in 1990 on a technology like blockchain? And this is how Taiken started. And then, as Constantine was saying, we felt the same pains again when Hurricane Irma hit the island. And now we have the people, the residents of St. Martin, they need to prove their identity to the Red Cross to get aid. Aid that is distributed on food vouchers, on paper-based food vouchers. If a resident in St. Martin washes his jeans and his food voucher is inside his jeans, and that's a true story, he will wait one week to get a new one. I mean, we can send an international payment today using cryptocurrencies. Can't we at least digitize or tokenize the food voucher program? We can, but there's a challenge of identity because we need to know who is getting this aid. And from there, you will get metrics. You will know how many children are there, how many women are there, what's their ages. And of course, this data is shared with the consent of the user. And that is the beauty of self-sovereign identities. It's not only about owning your own data. That can be done without a blockchain. But how are you going to share this data? How are we going to send this money to those people? Rabobank doesn't work on a Saturday and a Sunday. You can't send the payment. If Christmas is on a Monday, then your payment comes on a Tuesday. But in aid, Time is lives. And with blockchain, we can save time before saving money. And through that, we can prove that this technology is not about hype. It is about hope. Thank you. Okay.
Both the, both the jury were enthusiastic, uh, uh, both the, uh, uh, the audience, and us, I think this audience also is pretty clear. You now have a responsibility, this ICO is coming. Yes. Next year, when we're standing here at this stage, you started also last year you came exactly. to the conference. How was the conference then for you? It was, it was amazing because there with uh, Marlous, we started the journey in introducing blockchain and the benefits of digital identity within the government. This is actually where, where I, I met her and she gave us the chance to, uh, to, to pitch. And I met also uh, Herman Lohmann. I don't know if he's with us in the audience today. He's from the Houthof Burma uh, notarial offices. And he was very kind to offer us an NGO free of charge to What's push the NGO? the NGO, non-government organization, a non-profit organization. Okay. Where he made the paperwork. He the made the paperwork thing, yeah. uh, free of charge, pro bono, so that we can push our mission, Zinc, Zero Invisible Children, where we not only tell governments to use blockchain to issue birth certificates, but we tell them make a standard. And Netherlands not only has impact in, in this small geography, but there is a huge impact that the Netherlands can make in the international political scene and in the European Union, actually. So we are pushing now for an international standard to issue birth certificates. Similar like what a passport has, certain standards, we want an, a standardization of birth certificates so that we can really tackle the problem of zinc and zero invisible children by 2030 as what the UN SDGs are, United Sustainable Development Goals. Yeah, so that was the first one, and this yeah. is the second one. Now you've yes. been selected as the best ICO, and you're gonna get a lot of press, blah, blah, blah. Next year on this time, so what, what will you have done? Next year we would be launching, actually our pilot will start in September in St. Martin. So next year, hopefully we will have here some graphics on how many people were registered, how much time did we save, how much money did we save, and how many Red Cross organizations, because it's not only in the Netherlands, Red Cross is an international organization, 150 years old organization is entering blockchain and cryptocurrencies because of a startup like Tycon and because of your support and the support of everyone here. Okay, good luck, go Thank do that. Thank you so much. Go Thanks. do that, okay. Uh,